Hi guys, Nick Goldsmith here from Hidden Valley Bushcraft and today we are going to be down here at the main camp. I'm down here by the cabin. I've got Tilly Moo with me and I'm going to be talking to you guys a little bit about uh, haversacks okay, and their use in bushcraft and everyday carry. So we're just going to go through looking at some of the differences, bits and pieces, some of the stuff that's out there on the market that you can get your hands on today. We're also going to go ahead and look at some of the fundamental design features, differences, uses, my personal use, because it actually turns out that I've used haversacks a lot more than I realised or I thought I did. Okay, lots of different designs of haversack here. So I'll go ahead and just look at something that's quite new and exciting that's on the market and actually was pretty much the inspiration for this video. I typed in haversack, I typed in bushcraft and up comes this straight away. It's a heli context, um, okay, and it is a uh, eight litre little haversack. So for a start, the thing I noticed the most is the, uh, the method of opening it. I recognise this. This is uh, a well-known two-part construction, so you normally just pull that, yeah, okay, and the whole thing opens. Okay, so straight away, the thing I've noticed that they've done here is it's that good quality Kodura type material once again that I'm starting to, uh, to really kind of look for when I buy equipment in the outdoors. Um, it's got a padded bottom, which kind of feels quite like it's got a, a bit of life to it. I've just noticed there is a sneaky, looks like a decent water-resistant pouch in the back here, okay, with a bit of storage. It's got a decent looking strap, okay, which is adjustable and I can actually remove that strap, take that off. You can see the molly loops that have all gone on here so you can strap things to the side. One thing I will say, obviously it doesn't feel incredibly uh, strong compared to, compared to the kind of tensile strength you get with a rucksack. It's not quite there with this thing. Now looking inside, I can see that they've thought this thing through in that they've designed a pouch here for a water bottle. So let's go ahead, grab a water bottle and see how that sits in there. Certainly wouldn't fit a Crusader mug. There we go. It just about fits a Stanley and the Nalgene bottle just slides inside that. Now, what that's done to the weight of this thing, oh my God, it's all over the place with three quarters of a litre liter of water in here, it's completely changed the dynamic of the whole thing already. If I was to maybe stick, maybe to grab a knife and a saw, Okay, so now I've got maybe a knife, a saw, some gloves, some kind of a fire lighting kit, okay. There might be a little pouch or something I can put that into. Yeah, fair enough. A torch, okay, because I might need a torch. Let's put it in the side pouch or somewhere I can have a torch. But there's actually a little pouch on the front here as well for items, which is quite interesting. Okay, so I might have my Nordic pocket chainsaw might fit in there quite nicely, I don't know some kind of a first aid kit I want to go in here as well and already this thing is completely overwhelmed and I haven't got as far as a map or a compass or anything yet and does it close I've only just about closed that down okay so that's it with some weight in there now okay now it's now it's a very different beast I'm going to go ahead and pop this on and we'll see how it feels so as you can see I'm now sporting and wearing my haversack bag I've got a We've got three quarters of a litre of water in here. I've got some bits and pieces. I like the fact it's got this carry handle here. That is kind of helpful for when you're getting it on and off. Personally, I'm not really a fan of loading myself up one side or the other. So maybe if I try and spread the weight a little bit by putting it across the back of me, this might make it slightly more helpful as I may be moving around or interacting with the outdoors. I don't think I personally particularly enjoy moving through a piece of landscape with a haversack bag on that's not to say i haven't done that in the past and i have used haversacks in a number of different ways in in, in the soldering context as an actual off-the-shelf product if i had the choice which i have and you have as well i'd go for the backpack for the increase in literage and storage and for the better weight distribution around the body I mean, I've, I've put a handful of items in here. I've got a set of gloves. I've got a, a, a standing nesting cup, an algae bottle with three quarters of a litre of water, actual weight in it. And already I can feel that kind of pulling this way. I haven't put any food in here or any drink or anything else in here yet. I've got a first aid kit and some, a handful of basics and already I'm feeling kind of a little bit. I mean, to get to things, can't knock that. I literally just pull that open 
and boom, I need my first aid kit. Here's my first aid kit. I need my, you know, my water bottle. There's my water bottle. Can't complain. The nesting cup allows it to pop back in there. Doing the bag back up isn't too bad, and obviously getting into it is fairly quick as well. I think it has a place, but for me as an instructor, okay, having to have all those extra little items with me, probably not for me. There's also the fact that I've just noticed a tiny bit of distortion with the bag, okay, and, and if it starts raining, the rain will be thundering in straight into my bag. You really do have to make sure that that is put over the top there. So as soon as I saw this, it had me thinking uh, about something I used in my military service, which is here. Now, before I get into what I've done to this one, this is how they would normally look. Okay, and this is a car bag or ammunition bag. And you can see straight away, uh, a, little, uh, a little pad has been built into this to kind of help um, because this is designed to take a lot more weight. And this would generally get absolutely rammed to the gunnels with ammunition. I'd have six magazines on the front here. Okay, you've got grenade pouches on the side here as well. But it does actually make a really good haversack. It's got a great big Velcro flap, okay, and inside it's all that kind of heavy duty waterproof stuff you'd expect to see in here. Now these are actually called, there you go, grab bag MTP, bag ammunition. You can get these probably on eBay, I would have thought these are kicking around here somewhere. Um, very, very useful. Now what's cool about these is it was a design feature created so that if you needed to get something quickly, you could plunge your hand in through this, these two bits of uh, elastic and get something out. And equally, in really adverse conditions and bad weather, you have this storage flap, which could go over the top here and keep that nice and closed and not let any of the weather or elements in. They've over-engineered the flaps on the sides, okay? So again, rain coming in here isn't ever going to really be a problem. And the Velcro goes all the way around to the corner. Whereas on this, uh, the civilian model here, this, this Helicon model, uh, they've kind of tapered it in. Okay, now bearing in mind I was wearing this at a time where I'd have had a great big uh, set of body armour on the front of me, okay, with two plates, okay, helmet and all the rest of it. This would sit just below where the uh, any pouches I had on the body armour, I'd kept this side clean in fact. Okay, and so if I wanted to, I could go ahead and dive into here and grab bits. You could even use this as an impromptu if you kept the main compartment empty and you were having, you had a rifle, you could throw your empty magazines into here, okay, take your new magazine off, charge the assault rifle, obviously I'm using a bolt up here, <laughs> for the Americans who are watching this, I'm using the SA-80. Obviously you had grenade pouches on the front here as well. And the whole thing would come with me and stay with me a lot tighter because I'd gone ahead and put this leg strap on. So this was more of a kind of a force protection role uh, that I was using this haversack. Or if maybe if I had to go somewhere in a vehicle, okay, I could have this on my lap. And if the road move didn't go to plan or we were ambushed, okay, I could bring the weapon up to bear and start to use that from inside the vehicle. Everything's happening in a very small space here. Okay, so it's a lot easier than having a rucksack on your lap or something like that. So these really did have a great place and they were known as car bags or grab bags or ammo bags. Essentially, it's a haversack. I love the fact that it had that extra padding up there, which has actually slipped down the back. And, uh, and yeah, generally these were really, really useful. So again, guys, I'm not adverse to the haversack and I can see that this military item would have a great deal of application in bushcraft, which is why I went ahead and made this. Okay, so I pretty much simplified down one of those bags. And all I did was had a spare one. I got, a, I got my sharp little knife and I just unpicked all the uh, magazines on the front. So now I just have a one times Billy really basic eight to 10 liters of storage haversack, which I can dive into through here and get bits and pieces out and cover over. And of course it's much more waterproof, I think, than that the, the Helicon one for the fact that as soon as you put weight in it and it starts to distort, it's got a really decent strap on there with that pad on there as well, which obviously doesn't come on that civilian Helicon model. I did have an experiment with leaving the middle magazine pouch in and put it, trying to get my coffee mug to go in there. Uh, I had some success, but decided in the end, if I just want to use this for, uh, for whatever I'm going to go ahead and use this for, for perhaps everyday carry in the woods, I would just want to keep it as simple as possible, not overcomplicate things. So here we have one of the old school respirator bags. Okay, in fact, this is actually known as, I'm pretty sure inside it will say, here we go, Haversack 
respirator on there okay this is a 1990 model so much older it's got a combination of a popper button okay as it's kind of method of fixing the lid down but it's also got some velcro as well inside you can already you've already spotted it's got the bungee which can be very handy because you can you could go stick your tarpaulin or something up in the uh, the top there now looking inside you're looking at a decent eight to ten liters of storage and it's actually got some compartments oh look it's got a little storage compartment in here as well okay and then you've got even even smaller items that you can kind of stow away so taking a closer look at the back now it's got these two poppers okay this is the old school popper system now this bit would obviously sit so you could have this on your belt okay uh, and it's got the small loop the uh, the brass loop which would go with the, um, the the older pattern of webbing belts uh, that that used to be used in the here in the british military okay you'd have your uh, your insignia or your 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 details would be on here so for me it would say mne marine and then my service number etc and the unit i was with it's got an additional uh, what looks like an early version of the leg strap here which is just a piece of lace um, incredibly hard wearing piece of equipment the way that it folds down again being a military item they've over engineered those lips on the side so the rain stays off of it but yeah let's go ahead and stick some stuff in it and see how it feels maybe i could go ahead and put that in okay that fits in there quite nicely guys I can actually strap that down. So that's straight away, that's one thing going for it. To a degree, I can pop those in there. My gloves, a torch, okay, the first aid kit. Okay, and it's already, it's getting pretty full again. But what's great about this, it's actually got a little pouch on the side here. So I could go ahead and put my, uh, maybe my fire starting kit in the side of there as well. I think that's quite handy. Just a little Velcro tab. I don't know this, but I would have thought you could pick one of these up for a hell of a lot cheaper than some of the uh, the modern stuff out there. Here it is. I've got relatively little amount of equipment in it. Uh, it doesn't have the big pad up here, but it does have the quick release strap, so it can come off very, very quickly. So a little story about the military uh, respirator haversack. Somewhere between this model and the model I'm about to show you, okay, is the one that I was using on my first tour in 2008, where I was in fact a mini-me gunner or the saw gunner. Um, okay, I was using the um, power version with the stock that used to fold down for those in the know here. And what was important about a bag of this particular size and the fact that the newer version had these kind of straps that were compatible with the new age body armor was uh, that we were, we were being sent out the door to go into a uh, very, very hostile situation, okay, in, in Sangin, Helmand province. We had all the equipment, we'd say most of the equipment, but what we were lacking were the bespoke boxes or fabric bags to put the 200 round box onto uh, something like the Mini-Me, which is a belt-fed gas-operated weapon. Okay, so a bit more involved than just changing a magazine. I'd have to sort out working parts, lift up top cover. I'd have to then put a new uh, box on there and kind of, and all this needs to be happening like that as bullets are literally whipping around you. Okay, so what I did, uh, a lot of us did, was we took our respirator bags at the time. We bolted them pretty much to the front left-hand side of ourselves. Okay, so you'd be heading out on patrol with a box of 200 bullets on a belt that'd be going up into the actual weapon system itself, which weighed 18 pounds in one arm. And then you'd have another 200, round, 200 rounds strapped to the front of you here with a further 800 to 1,000 on your back, water and all the rest of it. Okay, so plus the plates, plus the, uh, the, uh, the helmet, you're starting to get an idea for the sort of weight you're having to carry in 50 degree heat over the most ridiculous terrain you've ever seen, up to there in ditches, climbing across rooftops, you name it, we were doing it. And it was thanks to something like the humble haversack that could be adapted in such a way uh, that it really kind of saved us. So there's a little story about haversacks. That was the, uh, the old school respirator bag. Let's go take a look at the new one. So what you're looking at here is now an MTP multi-terrain camouflage bag, okay? What's happened is the design has changed slightly, okay? So I'm missing one in the middle between the 1990 version, the one I used on my first tour, and then this one here. Now this can, can weave its way through bags with any of these kind of uh, molly loops on, which is quite useful. And it also does come with these kind of handy little uh, side pouches, which are actually used for steer storing spare filters. But if I was to get rid of those, uh, you can kind of see they, they add like a nice little bit of uh, literage. Uh, and inside here is in fact the respirator. And yes, yes, I'll go ahead and stick it on just for you. Mm. 
Okay, so here is the respirator I've now got on my head. So I think someone is learning to fly the plane today. I have no idea if you can hear me in here or not, but I'm gonna go ahead and take this stupid thing off in just a moment. Now inside here is the frame in which the gas mask actually sits around. And I'd have to guess the literage because I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. But I'm gonna say it's probably actually slightly smaller than maybe some of the others, although it is taller in terms of the bag is slightly larger. So yeah, it's got a good amount of space in there. Now there's this zip on the front which allows it to kind of have a little bit more space, okay? And you can kind of increase its uh, its literage and capacity by probably, well, probably almost a litre by doing that. And it's secured by these little uh, clips on the front. So you've got a female clip and a male clip, okay? And you can kind of have them in two or three, or one or two different configurations. At the back, as I was saying, it's got the quick release strap, although I will say these are on, these are plastic, okay? So they're not gonna put up with as much abuse in dark, deep, dark winters for those of you living in, uh, in kind of colder climates. It has though got itself the leg strap, okay? So you can strap this to your leg in the same way that I had to with that other one. Okay, and it's got these detachable pouches on the side here, which could come in quite handy. And thinking about it, you know, I might I might pinch those off of here and use them for something else at some point. Next time I'm deciding to build myself a little hybridized bag specifically for bushcraft micro adventures. And that's the joy of this guys. The fact is you don't have to buy something off the shelf. Um, you could make something. You don't have to use something that is specifically for any one purpose. You can reuse things, you can upcycle things. The world's your oyster, okay? Just have a little look around and think outside the box, as I've alluded to. Something like a respirator bag could in fact actually be uh, a very good bushcraft haversack bag. Now, the next thing I'm gonna look at, guys, is the kind of quintessential classic when we think about a little haversack bag, okay? And it's this little fabric, fold up, non-adjustable, one piece. Okay, so it's very discreet. This is something that I've gone out in the winter with my knife, my ax uh, with my knife, my saw, and a handful of bits in underneath a big coat. Okay, and it sits very flush to the body. It's ideal for uh, my, <laughs> my childhood as a youngster when I was out using a catapult. And I had something like one of these old Claymore bags. Now, obviously, since service, I've kept hold of a couple of these and I've cut out all the instructions. And what you actually have here are two fairly decent sized pouches. Many, many guys in the armed forces would go ahead and use these as doby bags, bags that you would put all of your kind of like your toothbrush, your flannel, your kind of your, your personal hygiene kit. And you could kind of take this with you to the heads or the toilets, okay? And you'd hang that up and you'd have everything in there, your razor, your mirror, etc. There's really not much to a Claymore bag. It's just a couple of fabric pouches, okay? And they close on one of these little um, male to female clips. There's a tiny bit of bit here for maybe putting a carabiner and attaching some bits and pieces. It's an extremely lightweight piece of kit. You can kind of fold it down. Here we go. You can kind of fold it right up. You can actually carry that quite easily inside inside maybe your backpack or somewhere uh, and deploy that and use that. So then you've kind of got the, the best of both worlds. Maybe you leave your rucksack at your main camp and then you, you push forward with your haversack for the afternoon and then come back to it later. Moving on, right, here is a handmade, a handmade English shooting bag. I was very fortunate to have a little, uh, a little friend who was very good on a sewing machine. And so I spoke to him very kindly. And this is actually an old US serviceman's kit bag. If you look how thick that canvas is. One of those great big tube bags with just a single strap that used to go down it. And I've had him reconfigure all the kind of buttons and make some pouches. So it's got a, it's got a pocket at either end. I like the design on the British military ammo bag so much. I had him make me one so that I can dive into here. Okay, if I want to get some cartridges, I can dive into here and get cartridges out. I wanted a two piece buckle design which we went ahead and threw on here. And uh, I've just thrown in some empty uh, 410 cartridges here, just to show you that these will hold 410 right there up to 12 bore because they're elasticated. And then inside, I've got a belt, obviously some ear defenders, some cleaning kit, some more cartridges, more cartridges in the bottom. It's basically just an ammo bag, but uh, it's built around a freezer bag. So it's got this lovely insulation properties to it. It's nice and black. And then what I've done is I've taken one of these little inserts that you put inside your cupboards. And that makes a really nice little bag, which I take shooting. However, it does struggle with the same issue that when it really starts raining, 
water gets in here, okay, or can do. So that's something uh, something I, I'm very wary of. But that's just to give an example. If you've got a sewing machine or if you've got someone who's talented who can help you, you can take apart a load of other bags and kind of make yourself something bespoke for a purpose. Now moving on to our final haversack of the day, a Norwegian, old Norwegian military uh, roll top. Okay, bag with uh, some waterproofs, toilet paper and some bits and pieces in there. Okay, and that just sits, hangs over the back of one of the seats. And when I was thinking about making this video, I was thinking, hang on, that's a haversack. But what's cool about this, okay, so it's not just a haversack, it's also a backpack. This is a hybrid. Okay, and all they've done here to create that is they put two loops in. So I could go ahead and wear this in two different ways. So I could, of course, go ahead and wear it like a haversack, as I am now. If I wanted to, I could go ahead and wear it as a backpack. I think that's kind of cool. I like the adaptability, I like the idea behind it, I like the simplicity of just having to roll the top up. If I could swap anything, I'd swap the, uh, the noisy Velcro for maybe just a little quiet clip. But other than that, it's pretty cool. So of course now would be the ideal time to go ahead and reveal one of our top top secrets as British commandos. We are obviously all taught how to open Velcro completely silently or in such a way that you can't hear the Velcro. It's something that's passed on from commando to commando. It's usually a deep secret inside our kind of brotherhood and not something that we like to share outside of that. But I think, I think it's only right that I, I take the time to go through this with you guys at home. The way to, to stop this kind of, the way to stop you from just hearing that all the time is to just very carefully, just, you see the little uh, tab here and you can see where all this stitching is going in. Okay, I don't know if we can zoom in on that. It's very, very important. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take two fingers, you're just gonna lift the beginning of this and just start to roll it back. Okay, and then at the point where you're about to start, you know, kind of peeling back your Velcro, all you've got to do is go ahead and just, oh look, I'll tell you what, I'll just go and do, give you a real time demo and you can see straight away. Here it is. Ah! And that's how you do it. That is the tactical way of opening Velcro without hearing the Velcro. Thanks for watching the video uh, today, guys. I'm Nick Goldsmith from Hidden Valley Bushcraft. I had a lot of fun making this and uh, it's only thanks to your comments that continue to drive all of the different directions that we're taking this channel in. We're one year into our YouTube journey uh, and we're loving it so far. Bye for now.